My name's Neil and I am from our West Wickham congregation. Today's devotion comes from Genesis 17 verses 9 to 27 and I've titled this The Father's Covenant. When I read the verses I was struck by how many times the Lord mentioned the word covenant in the passage. Between verses 9 and 27 he mentioned it nine times but in the whole chapter of 17 he mentioned it 14 times. So what does covenant actually mean? Well, it means an alliance. It means a pact or a treaty, or a testament to something that serves as a sign, an evidence of a specific fact or event. Now, when God spoke to Abraham, he made him three promises. The promised land, the promise of descendants, and the promise of blessings and redemption. Abraham had to wait many years for the Lord to come to him to fulfill the covenant that he had made. But God had not forgotten in the years that he'd spoken to Abraham. But the Lord does everything in his timings, not in ours. I mean, how many of us have had words spoken over us that we want to have now? We want to have here, I've heard it, I want them now. This is an instant society. But don't they say that good things come to those who wait? I have had words spoken over me many times and it has taken many, many years before I have seen the fruit of them. I mean, I was impatient and I looked for all those opportunities to match up to those words, but I never found them until actually I stopped looking and then they happened. And I'd like to say this is many of our experiences. But when the covenant was made with Abraham, it took time before the Lord came to him and called him to walk before him. In those years, Abraham was becoming a man of faith and it takes years for that to happen. It does not happen instantly. God takes his time with us, teaching us, sometimes in the mundane, boring ways, sometimes with a few spectacular little encounters. But when the time is right, those promises come to fruition. Just as when the time was right, God changed Abraham to Abraham and fulfilled the promises. And also he changed Sarai's name to Sarah. In verse 9 to 11, it says, Then God said to Abraham, As for you, you must keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you for the generations to come. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you, the covenant you are to keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised and you are to undergo circumcision and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and you. A Jewish boy goes through circumcision at eight days old. And in the Jewish language, it's called brith, which means cut. But for circumcision is not laid down as a requirement in the New Testament. Instead, Christians are urged to be circumcised by the heart, by trusting in Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross. As it says in Colossians 2.11, In him you were also circumcised, with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ. But more importantly, the act of circumcision is actually cutting away the flesh and an appropriate sign of the covenant for those who should put no trust in the flesh because we put our trust in Jesus and the cross. When we look at the promises of God, although they were made to Abraham, they are still for us today. We are all descendants and inheritors of the covenant. What was said in the past is for today and for tomorrow as well. As we are born again, we are redeemed from a life of sin and therefore we can live in the blessings of God. Abraham was blessed with family. He actually laughed when the Lord told him that he'd be a father at 100 years old. But when the Lord makes a covenant, nothing is impossible or even has a time expiry date. What we learn from here is that we should have an obedience to our Father, our Lord. We should keep faith and not despair, even when things look that there will be no way out. We should every day thank our Father for his covenant. His promises are on us each and every day. He is watching and daily teaching us to be more patient and to learn a deeper knowledge of him. Like Abraham, it took time for him to be a man of faith and it is no different for us. Our name may not be changed, but our heart and our life will be changed. When we understand God's covenant for us, it changes everything. Our relationship with our families and friends, our outlook, but ultimately our relationship with the Father and that will allow his blessings to show in our lives.